Hello everyone, I'm Ahmed, the tech lead at DeFi Chain, and I would like to get into a little bit of a video about uh, how we do the pool share calculation when you participate in liquidity mining on DeFi Chain. And so in today's video, I'm going to go through a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to give you a quick preview of the app in its current state. Uh, it's still a work in progress. Um, and I'll show you how to add uh, liquidity in the app. So when the app's released, you can do that. Um, give you a brief intro on liquidity pools. Um, and then I will uh, go into the liquidity calculation at the end there. So I'll start with the app. So here it is. Um, you can see the updated interface. We have um, liquidity, the DEX, tokens and uh, right here on this uh, liquidity page um, I can go into a pool I can select my tokens say uh, DFI or BTC or Bitcoin um, I can put in uh, a certain value and uh, what you'll see what happens here is that the app auto adjusts uh, the value for you so say I put in uh, a thousand DFI here uh, I'm only getting uh, one Bitcoin. Now obviously uh, this is running on the testnet um, and in reality a um, thousand DFI will buy you uh, much much less than one Bitcoin but uh, this is just uh, in a hypothetical scenario say where a uh, thousand uh, DFI was worth uh, 1.6 Bitcoins um, the app will auto adjust um, to give you the, the correct ratio and I'll explain in a moment why the correct ratio is important um, and the app uh, gives you the correct ratio to protect you and to give you the best, uh, the, the largest amount of liquidity uh, possible for the amount that you're putting in. Um, yeah. um, so that's all I'm going to show on the app uh, because we'll have more previews coming up in the future. Um, and again, it's, uh, it's uh, still has a, a little bit of way to go. We're still in the testing phase at the moment. Uh, yeah. So uh, back to the uh, explanation here. Um, liquidity pools, right? So, what are liquidity pools and um, how can you uh, liquidity mine or yield farm, as some people like to call it, through a liquidity pool? Uh, now, first of all, this presentation is not going to get into things um, regarding the swap, uh, or I'm not going to get into things such as uh, impermanent loss that's been covered in other videos. Um, I'm strictly going to talk about um, the, the mining, and even more specifically, I'm only going to talk about. Um, how do we calculate uh, the share, the amount of share that you get out of a pool uh, when you put, uh, when you supply liquidity to a pool? And so again, uh, liquidity pools, you supply liquidity, and that entitles you to a share of the commissions and a share of the yield farming reward. Now, the yield farming reward is a uh, a yearly, uh, a daily, a daily sum uh, that we will be giving out in DFI. Um, simply uh, for participating um, in our pools. So it's just a reward that you get simply for um, uh, putting uh, uh, supplying liquidity to a pool. Okay, so let's start with this scenario here. Um, let's say we have a liquidity pool um, that contains uh, 10,000 of token A, so maybe DFI, and uh, 5,000 of token B, uh, maybe USDT. Um, and in this scenario, Simply by looking at the amount of uh, tokens in the pool, you could speculate that two of token A is worth only one of token B. That's because we have half of the liquidity of token B. It's more precious. Um, and basically that's how a liquidity pool uh, works out the pricing ratio. So right here, um, we, can, we can estimate in the liquidity pool in its current state um, that two of token A is worth one of token B. Or, for instance, two DFI might be worth um, one USDT, fifty cents per DFI. Okay, um, so moving on. Um, here we have a, a hypothetical example where um, the user's wallet contains uh, four thousand of token A and two thousand of token B, and they want to supply all of it to the liquidity pool. Now, the liquidity pool contains ten thousand of token A and five thousand token B. Um, now, this is the correct ratio. Basically, because uh, one token A is worth um, uh, half of a token B, um, you'll need to supply twice as much token A as token B if you want to um, 
maximize your liquidity. You do not want to supply any other ratio. You always want to supply the exact ratio that you need to supply. Um, and in this case, because of uh, the distribution of the tokens, you want to supply exactly twice as much token A as there is token as you're supplying of token B. Um, and say uh, so, the user supplies it. They spend all their um, money from the wallet, and the pool is updated to contain here fourteen thousand of token A and seven thousand of token B. Now, um, getting in bit into the mathematics here, um, let's uh, let's look at another scenario where the pool is empty. So basically, the uh, the math that we use on DeFi chain is that if the pool is empty. Uh, we will do this. We will take the amount of token A that the very first user is putting into the pool um, and the amount of token B, multiply them, and then take the square root. So it's based like a Pythagoras, right? Um, so when the user puts in that um, puts in their liquidity into the pool, now the pool has 4,000 token A and uh, 2,000 token B. Um, they get back liquidity pool tokens. And uh, I can show you briefly on the app here. Um, so... For example, here I have uh, 44 of the D DFI BTC token. This means um, that I have put in liquidity and I have got back a liquidity token. And this liquidity token uh, represents my share in the pool. Um, and so this is the, the, the LP token that the user will get back uh, for their troubles. And then when they go to remove their liquidity, they deposit the LP tokens back in they disappear and the user gets back their 4,000 uh, token A and 2,000 token B. So that's basically how it works. The LP tokens are there um, as, a, as a ticket to keep track of the fact that you gave liquidity. And you can even um, send these to your friends or, or sell them. Um, and that would allow other people to redeem your liquidity on your behalf. Okay. So let's say the pool is not empty. Let's say the pool um, already has some um, liquidity inside it. What do we do in this case? Well, in this case, it gets a little bit more complicated. We will take the minimum of either the amount of token A that the user is putting in times the total amount of liquidity in the pool divided by the amount of token A inside the pool. Um, either this or the same for token B. So we do this calculation for token B and we see which one of these is less and then we give that as the LP token to the user. And so in this scenario here where the pool contains 4,000 of token A and 2,000 of token B, um, we can calculate using this previous calculation that the total liquidity in the pool here is 2,828. This was what the, the other user got for putting in the initial amount. Now let's say another user comes in with 4,000 of token A and 2,000 of token B. Oh, let me just adjust this, sorry. Actually, I intended this to be uh, 2,000 and 1,000, yes, so uh, slight typo there. So let's say a new user comes in with 2,000 of token A and 1,000 of token B, so exactly half of the total liquidity in the pool. Um, and then so we can look at the calculation here. Uh, 2,000 of the amount that they're putting in times the total liquidity divided by the amount that's already in the pool. That gives us 1,414. Again, for token B, 1,000 they're putting in times the total uh, liquidity in the pool divided by 2,000, which is the amount of token B. Again, we get 1,414. So we take the minimum of those two values, and because they're the same, it just ends up being the same. So this new user gets uh, 1,414 LP tokens to represent their share in the pool, their liquidity. Um, so I want to describe a scenario um, where you don't put in the correct ratio. Say you come in and you just put in 1,000 token A, 1,000 token B. You can do this, but you will be losing money because what happens in this case is that, um, say here, uh, we're putting in 1,000 of token A times the total liquidity divided by 4,000. Um, you will um, you will get 707, and then for token B, you're putting in 1,000 times 2,828 divided by 2,000. You're getting 1,414, and so we look at these two values here, and we give you the minimum. So you end up getting only 707. 
um, well, the, this user here yeah, get, ends up only getting 707 LP tokens, which is um, which means that they wasted money here. They didn't they didn't need to put in so much of token B. So, for instance, they could instead put in uh, only 500 of token B, and then yeah. So basically, 500 of token B got wasted in that in that transaction. It still goes in the pool. But the user is only entitled to the minimum of those two values. Um, now, DeFi app uh, protects you from that. Um, so as I showed earlier, if you do go to add liquidity um, and you put in a certain amount here, uh, the app will automatically calculate the ratio for you as you type it in. Um, so there's no way to screw it up. Um, it will always give you the correct ratio. Um, so the app protects you from that. This scenario is not going to happen if you use the app. Um, but it can happen if you, say, uh, were to use the command line console and um, draft your own uh, transaction. And that's when you need to kind of uh, take into account these calculations here. Um, yep. And so um, that pretty much sums it up. Um, again, DeFi app protects you. It will uh, give you the exact correct ratio to maximize your liquidity. Um, and uh, these are the calculations that we use both for um, putting in the um, initial liquidity amount um, and then the, the liquidity amount um, once the pool is full. Now, um, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, uh, you're only going to be concerned with this uh, because um, our pool is almost always going to be full. We're going to be putting in uh, some money um, from coming in from other sources as well. Um, to ensure that there's initial liquidity for people to trade on. Um, so this, this scenario is not likely to actually exist in a practical sense.